Helium is a chemical element with the symbol He and atomic number 2. It is a colorless, odorless, tasteless, non-toxic, inert, monatomic gas, the first in the noble gas group in the periodic table. Its boiling point is the lowest among all the elements. Helium is the second lightest and second most abundant element in the observable universe, hydrogen is the lightest and most abundant. It is present at about 24% of the total elemental mass, which is more than 12 times the mass of all the heavier elements combined. Its abundance is similar to this in both the Sun and in Jupiter. This is due to the very high nuclear binding energy, per nucleon, of helium-4, with respect to the next three elements after helium. This helium-4 binding energy also accounts for why it is a product of both nuclear fusion and radioactive decay. Most helium in the universe is helium-4, the vast majority of which was formed during the Big Bang. Large amounts of new helium are being created by the nuclear fusion of hydrogen in stars. The first evidence of helium was observed on August 18, 1868, as a bright yellow line with a wavelength of 587.49 nanometers in the spectrum of the chromosphere of the Sun. The line was detected by French astronomer Jules Janssen during a total solar eclipse in Gunter, India. This line was initially assumed to be sodium. On October 20th of the same year, English astronomer, Norman Lockyer, observed a yellow line in the solar spectrum, which, he named the D3 because it was near the known D1 and D2 Fraunhofer line lines of sodium. He concluded that it was caused by an element in the sun unknown on Earth. Lockyer and English chemist Edward Franklin named the element with the Greek word for the sun, Helios. In 1881, Italian physicist Luigi Palmieri detected helium on Earth for the first time through its D3 spectral line, when he analyzed a material that had been sublimated during a recent eruption of Mount Vesuvius. On March 26, 1895, Scottish chemist Sir William Ramsey isolated helium on Earth by treating the mineral cleavite, a variety of uraninite with at least 10% rare earth elements with mineral acids. Ramsey was looking for argon but, after separating nitrogen and oxygen from the gas, liberated by sulfuric acid, he noticed a bright yellow line that matched the D3 line observed in the spectrum of the Sun. These samples were identified as helium by Lockyer and British physicist William Crookes. It was independently isolated from cleavite, in the same year, by chemists, for Theodore Cleave and Abraham Langlet, in Uppsala, Sweden, who collected enough of the gas to accurately determine its atomic weight. Helium was also isolated by the American geochemist, William Francis Hillebrand, prior to Ramsey's discovery, when he noticed unusual spectral lines while testing a sample of the mineral uraninite. Hillebrand, however, attributed the lines to nitrogen. His letter of congratulations to Ramsey offers an interesting case of discovery and near discovery in science. In 1907, Ernest Rutherford and Thomas Royds demonstrated that alpha particles are helium nuclei, by allowing the particles to penetrate the thin, glass wall of an evacuated tube, then creating a discharge in the tube, to study the spectrum of the new gas inside. In 1908, helium was first liquefied by Dutch physicist Heike Kamerling Onnes by cooling the gas to less than 5 K, minus 268.15 degrees Celsius, minus 450.67 degrees Fahrenheit. He tried to solidify it, by further reducing the temperature but failed, because helium does not solidify at atmospheric pressure. Honest student Willem Hendrik Kiesem was eventually able to solidify a 1 cm cube of helium in 1926 by applying additional external pressure. Liquid helium is used in cryogenics, its largest single use, absorbing about a quarter of production, particularly in the cooling of superconducting magnets, with the main commercial application being in MRI scanners. Helium's other industrial uses, as a pressurizing and purge gas, as a protective atmosphere for arc welding, and in processes such as growing crystals to make silicon wafers, account for half of the gas produced. A well-known but minor use is as a lifting gas in balloons and airships. As with any gas whose density differs from that of air, inhaling a small volume of helium temporarily changes the timbre and quality of the human voice. In scientific research, the behavior of the two fluid phases of helium-4, helium I and helium II, is important to researchers studying quantum mechanics, in particular the property of superfluidity, and to those looking at the phenomena, such as superconductivity, produced in matter near absolute zero. 
On Earth, it is relatively rare, 5.2 ppm by volume in the atmosphere. Most terrestrial helium present today is created by the natural radioactive decay of heavy radioactive elements, thorium and uranium, although there are other examples, as the alpha particles emitted by such decays consist of helium-4 nuclei. This radiogenic helium is trapped with natural gas in concentrations as great as 7% by volume, from which it is extracted commercially by a low temperature separation process called fractional distillation. Previously, terrestrial helium, a non-renewable resource because once released into the atmosphere, it promptly escapes into space, was thought to be an increasingly short supply. However, recent studies suggest that helium produced deep in the Earth by radioactive decay can collect in natural gas reserves in larger than expected quantities, in some cases, having been released by volcanic activity.